Would you like to have your pet American Cocker groomed in an easy pet commercial way? Keep on watching because today that's what we're doing. Hello, my name is Kitty, Kitty from Transgroom, and today I'm going to talk about an American Cocker, Rudolph. I'm going to show you how to groom a commercial Cocker still according to the breed standard. It means that we're going to still strip the back and the neck and we're going to not clip but actually scissor all the feathering quite short. The advantage of this clip is the dog can still go with you for walks, he can swim, he can play in the mud and it's not so heavy in maintenance it means because the hair is shorter and it's better to maintain. This is Rudolph, he's a very happy dog he's well maintained, he's groomed every three months and we still strip the whole back. We do that because when you strip you keep the color and as you can see the color at the back is nice dark brown and it's not like beige, uh, you know, faded, curly, soft, it's, it has a nice stru structure to it. So we're here in Emmy's grooming shop. Emmy von Hammond has uh, kindly let us come here to take this video. So this morning I've prepared my grooming box and all my grooming equipment and we're here for Rudolph the American Cocker. First I like to brush everything out and see how much underwool there is and if there's any mats I'd like to loosen them up so the dirt in the bath you can wash it nicely out. I'm brushing with a slicker brush because I like the angle in the slicker brush. It goes like this and when you brush, it, the, because of the angle, you can deep inside the coat, take the mats away. So I also like to brush in lines. As you can see here at the front leg, I go from the top or I go from the bottom and I go to the top and each time I take a little bit of hair and that means I'm everywhere deep to the skin. If you just brush on top, sometimes you don't get through the th thick coat and you think it's done and it's not. And here I found a mat in the dog's ear. So I'm using the mat splitter. This splits up the mat because it has a blade in it. And uh, once the mat is split up, you can still use the slicker brush and the dematter to further tease out the mat. When you use the dematter, it's very important that you put the dematter in the coat and take it back out and in the coat again, take it back out with tension, but not too much tension um, to not hurt the dog. Here I'm going to go slow and in slow motion try to show you what I do in norm. I take it and I say tease it out, take it, tease it out and this is actually a short, um, a short burst on or short tension, and I let go again. If you do it long and you would like to, you know, take tear it out, it would hurt the dog and it would be very uncomfortable. And each time I use the dematter, I slicker. I use the slicker to further get out the mat. It's not so that the dematter, you demat everything out and you, because every time you use the dematter it has seven or five knives and you take it out and actually the mat is then cut in five slices. It's not to do it again because then maybe you will dematting, you will go like curved way and it's possible that the mat and all the hair that was there, that because of you used the matter too much, you'll have a bald place. So actually, the correct way of using a dematter is once and twice and then slicker. And if you feel too heavy mats again, you use it again. You slice the mat in so many pieces and then you tease it further out with the slicker.
Rudolph is a very happy dog to walk on. Okay, I'm now just testing if I was okay with my dematting and I'm using the comb and I'm going right until near to the skin and to see if I've done my work correctly. Here you see again, I'm using the slicker brush and I'm sectioning the ear. I'm doing the front first and then steadily going to the back. As you can see, he has a lot of undercoat and he's, it's really necessary this coat comes out. He's a cutie! <laughs> His tongue! <laughs> okay, if you see me using a comb, it's because I've been brushing in that area and I'm just checking myself to see if I'm if I made my work with my slicker brush okay, I always use the comb for checking if I was okay and if it, I can go through with the comb, it means that it's ready to go into the bath. Also, it's important to say that when you see me slicker using the slicker brush, I'm taking the slicker brush and I'm not like twisting because when you twist your hand and do that, you with the front row pins, you would hurt the skin. And it's also not good for the brush, but mostly it would be uncomfortable for the dog. So when, you, when I use the slicker, I do that and I don't do that with the slicker. So grooming the nails, I like to use uh, this nail clipper. It's uh, small, but very handy. I also like to have all my stop lead with me. You never know if I go too short. I have the stop lead and a piece of paper to stop the bleed and then immediately I can use it. I like to have the dog's nails quite short. Uh, it's important to me because it's so comfortable for the dogs if they have short nails. For cleaning the greasy ears, I very much like to use the Showtech ear cleaner. This is a liquid and it will dissolve all the grease that's in the ears and the dirt. So I uh, start by uh, stretching the ear upwards and pouring in the liquid in the ear. And then I will mis massage behind the ear and I will hear a noise like, like this. <laughs> I will use the ear wipe for the outside because the product has now dissolved many of the grease also on the outside and on the outside of the ear I like to use the ear wipes and here you see that many dirt will come already off with the ear wipes. The inside is done with the bamboo stick. This is a very thick swab and it will take easily all the dirt and the rest of the grease away. Here you see me carding the coat. Carding is very important. So the dead hair comes out of the hair follicle and while you are taking out the dead hair, you are creating place in the hair follicle for new hairs to grow. And the new hairs will be darker in color and they will be a better quality. So it's very necessary to do this because otherwise the hair follicle will suffocate and there will not be enough place in there to grow new coat. So even if the dog has been clipped or even if it's a terrier and it's been scissored or you know it's really very necessary all terriers and hand strip breeds you card them so all the dead hair comes out. For this carding or de-wooling I'm using the Showtech medium, not the fine but the medium because I think that this one takes the most under wool out and it's easiest to do. Okay, let's do some stripping. I'm using on this dog the stripping stone. It's the Showtech stripping stone, it's a very soft stone and I'm using this because I don't want to use, use a stripper, uh, a stripping knife. Uh, 
it's the, the coat is okay it's not possible to do it by hand because it's very hard and it's also not necessary it's a commercial dog and with a stripping stone with a stripping stone you can pluck the hair out very very well uh, you can see here there's a place done now but it's gonna be a big job to get all that under wool and all that coat nicely and flat I'm not trying to strip short I'm just trying to strip all the dead hair out and make sure the dog it has a nice back with the proper hair which is stripped out and place for the new hair to grow I'm also using the coat king on the sides because I want to get rid of all that uh, soft woolly hair and on the sides I'm where you see the from the short hair to the long hair I don't like it when it flops up and when it's you know so wooly and uh, so I like to use the coat king with 20 blades and go on the sides with it to take away some wool out of the long hair and as you can see here I'm using a stripping knife because this, this is a very good stripping knife it's the Showtech Fine now uh, stripper and um, it's, it's very, it, this stripping knife is very good for American cocker coat or spaniel coat and it's when you know you can change you can change from the stripping stone to a stripping knife to stripping thimbles and here you see me using again the the coat king it's um it's okay to change it just needs to be done and <laughs> the hair needs to be properly stripped after one hour of hard stripping I've managed to flatten the whole coat and I'm very happy about the result it's a nice red coat underneath and it's as flat as I can get it it's not necessary to go short it's just necessary to have a good coat under there and so it's not all standing up and all the light colored coat is gone So let's do some clipping. My favorite machine is the Heinegger for heavy work. So I'm using the Heinegger. For the face, I've used the 15. I've used the 15 from the ears to the eyes and from the, um, the whole muzzle. You take your hands on the cheeks or on the neck of the dog. Everything before you can do with the 15 against. So you go against the grain of the growth of the coat with the 15 blade. And here it's very important when you do the muzzle that you put the dog's muzzle, you hold it tight and closed so the dog doesn't have a chance to get out his tongue. And it's very, it can happen very quickly. If the tongue gets into the blade, the blade does that, you can damage the tongue. Instead of using the whole blade or the top corner of the clipper to clip the line between the ear and the eye, I'm using the below corner and I'm going above the line and this way because you use only the point, the below point of the blade, you will create a soft line and that means it will be easier for you to blend in the long and the short coat afterwards when you are using the blending scissors. Rudolf was a bit cheeky while I was doing his muscle. He got his tongue through a few times. It was quite funny. It was quite hard to tightly close his muscle. Sometimes American cockers do that. For the ears I'm using for the inside always a 30 blade and for the outside a uh, 15 size blade. I'm also using my Heinegger and um, I'm going against the grain to have a very nice finish. And then because the ear is finished I can do the rest of the neck. Okay as you can see here I'm doing also the neck. For the neck I'm using a 10 blade and I'm going from off this point downwards I'm using a 10 blade and I'm going with the coat.
For finishing the head, everything is done by blenders. It's just blending and combing and blending and combing and blending and combing until all the hair is natural. So here you can actually finish between the very very short clipping work and you can take every single sign of the clippers away with the blending scissors. You can see here each time I use the blender I'm like blending and then pulling. I do that because then the hair sticks up and the next time you use the blender scissor you see where to scissor. Because normally after finishing you shouldn't see any lines or any places where hair is still sticking out. You can go against the hair growth or with the hair growth. And always use this direction. Never cut when the hair grows like this. You can cut like this or like this, but never cut like that. If you cut like that you'll see lines. So always against or with the hair growth and then you'll, you'll be able to finish it very naturally. Today I'm using the scissors, the Yento scissors, blender, 40 teeth, and I'm using the slicker again to lift the hair so I see where to scissor. And actually, if you see me scissoring, I don't like to scissor much on the same spot, so I'm going to scissor, either I'm going to go forward or I'm going to go forward or next to the pl place where I just scissor and then I'm going to comb again, I'm going to comb the hair upwards and when you continue doing this you will have a fantastic finish. So just continue blending and brushing and combing until all the hair is natural. And now we're going over to the neck. I'm going to blend a little bit of the hair here and then for having a soft finish I'm going to continue with my stripping uh, stone and with my stripping stone I'm going to make sure that all the dead hair between uh, the short and the long is natural and then I'm going to continue with my blenders and with my clippers until I see no lines and it's all nicely smooth and nice to look at. Okay, let's do some washing. This dog hasn't been washed in 10 weeks because the owner is afraid to wash it and this happens a lot. I think dogs should go in the bath much more than every four weeks. An American cocker produces a lot of oils and talc in its skin and coat and uh, I think at least one time in a month it should have a bath and that will also be much better to groom it, to brush it and to maintain its coat between the groomings. Today we've decided to use the Pro 40 as the first shampoo because the Pro 40 is a shampoo who degreases very much. It's a cream shampoo, it's a very thick shampoo which you have to dissolve and uh, it's very good for American cockers because of the oily skin they have. I think we're going to give the dog three times a bath instead of two times because it's been eight weeks ago or ten weeks ago even he, he, he's been washed. So we're going to wash and rinse and wash and rinse again and wash and rinse again for the third time. It's no use in um, not rubbing very hard because as I said uh, American cockers have a very oily skin and it's a hard oil and it's very necessary to use a good lather, a good uh, shampoo which dissolves all this grease. For rinsing I like to hold the dog's nose up and go around the nose with the sprayer. I don't mind shampoo in the eyes because it's going to rinse the eyes. It doesn't matter if the shampoo, if the, of course the water tension is not too much and the temperature as well, but never in the dog's nose. He's a very good dog. <laughs> So I'm constantly rinsing and actually with my other free hand I'm pushing out the, 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 the water and I'm that's actually when the dirt goes off the dog. It's not 
while you're washing only no when you're rinsing you're rinsing away and there also it's very necessary to you know massage the skin massage the coat push it out with your hands and then all the dirt and the rest of the shampoo is going to go out here you see me the second time now washing i'm uh, using again the pro the showtech pro 40 shampoo and I'm doing the same thing over and all again and for the last wash I'm going to use the Showtech Pro Brightening which is concentrated 15 to 1. This is one of my favorite shampoo because it nurtures the coat very well with its coconut oils and it makes the color come out because of the coconut oils and it's easier to dry. Rudolf doesn't look very happy with his three washings. I think Rudolf was happy with one. <laughs> Because Rulf, Rudolf has a difficult coat, difficult to manage, we're using the mask conditioner from Showtech. This is a very thick paste which is very nutritive, uh, nut nutrients the coat very well. And it's going to make it easier to dry and easier to scissor afterwards. We've left it on for five minutes and then we've rinsed. So when I have to scissor the dogs, I always rinse out all the conditioner all the way out. So let's do some drying. So the first thing I use is the magic towel. I like the magic towel very much because it takes so much of that water out of the coat without having to use towels too much. And you can just squeeze the water out. And I do that two, three, four times depending on which breed it is. So after we use the magic towels a few times and squeeze it out a few times, I like to, uh, to dry the head a bit with the towel and dry maybe a little bit of the hairs not to have the water you know, splash everywhere when we start using the dryer. And now we're going to start with the force dryer. The force dryer is a dryer with a strong motor and it's tube and at the end of the tube a very small hole so all the air is firmly pushed out of the end of the the nozzle and because it's so strong air it will straighten the coat and it will push out the water very quickly so when you do the dog legs you use the towel at the back of back of the leg and with the force dryer the force dryer pushes out the water from the front of the leg to the back of the leg and because you're holding the towel there the towel will absorb all the water and you will use time and efficiently you will work much better. So after we finish with the force dryer we're going to use the slicker brush again and the normal dryer and here you see us um, drying with the normal dryers and with the slicker brush and also here we take a certain place with hot air and we pull with the slicker brush and we pull all the curls and we straighten up all the hair with the warm air until it's dry and after it's dry it will stay nicely and straight. I like to divide the legs in four parts. I have like the front part, the side, the back and the inside and with the dryer I go from the top of the leg to the bottom of the leg, the front and then I take the sides and then the inside. And also like for the ears, it's very easy for American Cocker ears to be curly so it's very important just to brush and to brush left and right and pull the hair straight with the warm air until it's dry and then it's also going to stay quite straight. So remember this customer would like to have the hair as short as possible. So we're not going to do long American cocker feet. We're going to do them as short as possible for the customer. And I like to scissor and use the comb and scissor and use the comb a lot. So I'm, I like to do the front where the nails are very, very short. And then I go from there, I do the back and then I round the feet. And for this time, I'm using the, er the Ergo line from Yento. 17.7 centimeters. I like the scissor very much 
And now many people are going to say, why are you not using curved? Well, actually, I was taught grooming dogs with straight scissors, and I don't have a problem with straight scissors or curved scissors, but when I when I usually work, I don't think about curves because I was never used to using curves and I just use the straight. But you can do the feet with whatever scissor you like. You can do it with straight or with curves. At the end you'll have the same finish. So now I'm doing the feet, the legs, and I'm using a, a, a chunker, as you can see here. And um, the chunker, I'm using a chunker also from Yento Ergoline. It's the 20 and a half centimeter chunker. And the scissor is a very strong scissor. And you can work very well with that scissor. So for the chest, it's very important to have the chest nicely rounded. And um, I'm trying to, with my scissors, I'm trying to follow the front of the leg. So there I'm going to go quite short. And the rounding of the chest and the front of the neck, I'm trying to go very short there. As you can see, I've been combing and scissoring and combing and scissoring again until I have the nice, the chest and then the front of the foot. And because I like to have the two sides in the same way, I don't wait too long to do the other side. And as you can see, you don't have to use the chunkers, you can also do it with the normal scissors. There I was using the Yento Ergoline 20 cm scissor and it goes just as well. Just maybe for the finishing, then afterwards I'm going to use the chunker to have a softer finish, as you can see here. I'm actually combing the coat in all kind of directions, so then I can easily cut the rest off with the blending scissors. And also while I'm doing that, I'm, I'm like thinking, what if the dog goes outside and it's windy and, you know, the wind blows the hair everywhere and you see places which is not correct. So I really like to lift up the hair with the brush or the comb and comb it in all kind of directions and then use the blender or the chunker to finish. I've tried to do the feet as short as possible. As you can see, there's not much coat on them anymore. So when it rains and when it's muddy, it's not so difficult to maintain. So here you see me using the blender, the 48 teeth blender from Ergoline from Yento. And I'm doing this to make all the lines disappear I have from using the chunker. Sometimes because the chunker is so wide and it takes so much hair out at the same time, you have some scissor marks. When you have lines, it's very easy to make them disappear with the Yento blender, 48 teeth. Here you see me making the tummy. So I'm lifting the front leg because there I've started the, the rounding from the tummy, from the chest, and from the tummy, from the chest, to the bottom is one line. So I just continue the line from the front to the back. Here you see me chunking very very aggressively <laughs> with my Yento chunker and getting rid of a lot of hair. I'm trying to create some angulation in the back so the part I'm doing now I'm doing short and also I don't like it when you have like a, a line and then suddenly the feathering going out, you know, like thick and everything. I like to have everything nicely and smooth. <laughs> Rudolph is checking me if I'm doing the right thing. He's worried. Also, when I'm doing the feet, I'm actually with my scissor blades. I'm never going over the pads. I'm, go I'm just going around the pads, but never like... I'm not doing this, I'm going around. And when I'm doing that, I'm going around here. But with my scissor blades, I'm never going to be on top of the pads. Because I've seen a lot of accidents with people scissoring in the pad. So this is an easy way not to hurt the dogs. As you can see, I'm scissoring with the normal scissors now. I'm actually changing a lot because sometimes it's easier to use the normal scissors, sometimes it's easier to use the chunker, 
and I use the chunker when it's more difficult to finish or to finish it nicely then I'm going to finish it with the chunker. When I have a lot of hair to take out and it's it's going with my normal scissor I'm going to use a normal scissor. When I need to blend from very long to very short I'm using the blending the blender. It's nice to see it from another another view. I think now I'm going to blend the leg into the tummy and I'm going to try not to go short at the tuck up so I don't have a visual, visual line and between the tummy and the back leg it's not like that, a corner, but it's nicely like going up and then gradually going down. I really don't like it when it go up and down when it has a square at the tuck up. So as you can see I'm changing between scissoring contra direction of the hair growth with the hair growth I'm changing all the time. And I'm not afraid of scissoring now where I've been stripping because I know I've stripped for a very long time and I've stripped a lot a lot of dead coat out. And next time the dog comes, we're going to do this again. So I'm not afraid of going over uneven pieces where I stopped stripping and the hair is sticking up. I just scissor it. Because I know next time I'm going to strip it anyway. I think Rudolph is starting to look like a puppy again. So here you see a finished happy Rudolph. And me. <laughs> Rudolph was an American cocker groomed in a commercial way still nicely stripped in the back, so according to the breed standard. We will show you a few pictures, the before and the after. This was Kitty for Transgroom TV. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you're very welcome to write them down below in the comments. Thank you for watching.